Well, the boys are definitely keeping this location under wraps, but there's a large swell inbound on the region over the next few days with wave periods strong enough to light it up in the 12 to 15 foot plus range. Just landed in Perth, uh, flight was delayed and we've come in, it's now 10 to 12 at night. We're um, heading to Perth City to pick up the Red Bull scoop. We're lucky enough to have one of the office workers who's going to come in and open up the shed for us. Nothing about this one. Won't be paddling into these waves tomorrow, for sure. The drive's going to take about five hours. It's a pretty dangerous drive because there's kangaroos jump out on the road. Hopefully it's all worth it in the morning. Boys have told us it's reading 4.5 on the buoys this morning which is uh, a fair bit bigger than the last time we were out here. We surfed the left for a couple of hours and it was pumping, like almost too big for it. You know, Rich in that situation just stands out. You know, he got way deeper than anyone out there. He was deeper than even the bodyboarders. He got smashed on a few, that's the price you pay, but he ended up on easily the best lefts of the day for sure. It's so powerful, comes out of such deep water that when it hits you, it's, it's like running into Sunny Bill's shoulder about five times in a row and then trying to hold your breath at the same time. The rock running training just really prepares you for dealing with heavy wipeouts. You know, look, we, we fall on some huge waves with, that have so much power in them and they'll hold you down and roll you around for so long that you really want to be prepared for that so, so nothing too serious goes wrong. Let's just say it's a good eight to ten hours from any, any medical attention if something bad happens. It was a pretty amazing spot. I've never actually seen so much marine life in the one spot in such a short space of time. You just know when there's that much marine life around that there's going to be a lot of sharks around as well. When you're out there in towing, it's your turn and you're hanging off the back of the ski, just bobbing around in the water. It's really scary. The coastline on the way down there is just beautiful, but it's really rugged at the same time. There's a few certain spots you can actually get your skis into the water, so you have to sort of know the coastline well to be able to get out there. We were actually really just going to surf the left-hander that we'd heard about. It was when we were surfing the left that we decided to drive a bit further up the coast, and that's when we came across the right. Lucky we decided to drive up there because the right was just amazing. We don't know that it's actually going to be on definitely until about 24 hours out from the surf. In that 24 hour period, we've got to get jet skis ready, cars ready, book our flights. We've got to organise a couple other surfers to come down and tow with me. We've got to get photographers and videographers to come and document the trips. But when we pull it off, it's just all worth it.
definitely some of the heaviest waves I've ever surfed. There's just so much water coming out of deep ocean. It tries to rip you into pieces when you fall off. The trip actually ended on a pretty sour note. We came in from the surf and we found an axe smashed through the windscreen of our hire car. It was pretty surprising because we're actually good mates with the local surfers down there, but uh, it definitely won't scare us from going back down there. You can find us if they wanted to find us, you know, instead they'd rather go smash a windscreen. Yeah.